This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. You can save thousands of dollars fixing this transmission yourself. This fact alone will inspire a lot of people to do it. Mr. Ford had this to say. You can do anything if you have enthusiasm. So look at it this way. It will cost, on average, $4,000 to have a professional thoroughly rebuild an E4OD 4100. You can do it yourself for about one-fourth of that and do a better job. Mr. Ford also said, most people spend more time and energy going around problems than in trying to solve them. I think a lot of people spend too much money having someone else tackle a problem they could take on themselves. Transmission repair is not for everyone, but if you're still with me at this point, it is for you. It's great to have you back in class. This is E4OD 4R100 class, lesson four. In the last two lessons, we disassembled the valve body area. In this lesson, we'll begin the disassembly of the drivetrain. Removing the parts from the case will be a lot easier and safer if the case is not laying on its side. We need to reposition the transmission upright on end but before we do, let me explain how you can make a fixture to support it. This is the stand I mentioned in lesson one. You can make it from two eight foot long two befores and a few three inch wood screws in just a few minutes. Here are the dimensions. It is 19 and a half inches tall, which will put the case at a comfortable work height for most people. The sides are 15 inches by 15 inches. The top two sections are spaced exactly six and a quarter inches apart in order to allow the parking gear and output shaft to pass through them. You'll need to cut the two befores into three different lengths. The four tall upright ones are 18 inches long. You'll need four 12 inch pieces for the short sections of the sides. You'll need a total of six 15 inch pieces. Four of them are for the long sections of the sides and the other two are fastened to the top for the case to rest on. Take the time to make this stand. As I said before, it will only take a few minutes to assemble it and you'll be rewarded with a much more comfortable work position. With the transmission positioned upright, we can get back to work. Notice how the stand allows access to the output shaft. You'll not only be able to turn it, but also remove and reinstall it from below the case later. Removal of the pump is next. Use a 10 millimeter socket, extensions, and ratchet to remove the nine pump to case bolts. Wear gloves to protect your hands from the extremely sharp edges of the bell housing.
place the nine bolts into a box on the parts bench. Professionals use a device like this one to remove the pump from the case. It's called a pump puller. I don't expect you to have access to one, but I'll show you how it works and then we'll discuss an easy to make alternative tool. First, it's placed over the stator support like so. Then a half inch wrench is used to tighten two bolts which will clamp a collar to the support spline. Turning the T-handle of the center bolt puts pressure on the input shaft, which lifts the pump assembly upward. This tool, while nice to have, costs almost $300. Now let me show you a low-cost alternative. This is the homemade tool I mentioned in Lesson 1. It's actually a dual-purpose tool for not only removing pumps, but also for removing a piston housing located deeper within the case. Let me show you how it works and then I'll give you the dimensions and materials list so you can make one yourself. It works just like the professional tool, but attaches to the pump differently. Look closely into the pump bolt holes here and here. These two holes are uniquely different from the other seven. They have been tapped to accept SAE 3 8 inch by 16 threads per inch rods or bolts. To attach the tool to the pump, install 12 inch long sections of 3 8 inch by 16 threaded rod into both holes. I made mine from a 24 inch long piece I bought from a hardware store and cut in half with a hacksaw. Eight to ten turns is plenty. Insert the rods through the holes on the ends of the main part of the tool. Slide the puller down until the center part rests onto the input shaft. Finish attaching the tool with flat washers and nuts. Use a half inch open end wrench to prevent this nut from turning. This short section of square tubing along with the pairs of nuts above and below it are actually not used in this procedure. They will become active later during removal of a piston housing. Use another wrench or socket and ratchet to turn these two nuts which have been jammed together. Keep turning until the pump is free from the case. Back out the rods to remove the tool.
lift the pump out, turn it over. There should be a thin two tab plastic thrush washer against the pump here. A thin film of fluid usually holds it in place, but for demonstration, I have put a small amount of assembly gel on it to help it stay there as I remove the pump. If this washer remained on the drum below it, pick it up and place it here. Take the pump assembly to the parts bench. Set it down in this area. Now let's take another look at the puller. Here are the dimensions and materials list for making the tool. You'll need a 12 inch long, 5 16 of an inch diameter piece of threaded rod along with six nuts which fit it. You'll also need two sections of 1 8 of an inch thick, 1 inch square steel tubing. The long one should be cut to an exact length of 10 and 5 16 inches. The length of the shorter one should be 7 inches. Finally, you'll need two 12 inch long sections of 3 8 by 16 threads per inch threaded rod along with two nuts and flat washers which fit it. We will use this tool again in a few minutes. Moving along with the disassembly, simply pull the input shaft up and out of the overdrive sun gear. Set it in this area on the parts bench. If the pump to case gasket remained in the case, remove it now by carefully peeling it out. If you have to, wear gloves to protect your fingers and use a razor blade or a scraper to separate it from the case. Place it onto the bottom side of the pump. As I mentioned before, save all of the parts, even gaskets which will eventually be replaced with new ones. You may need to compare the old ones with the new ones later. Reach into the center of the coast clutch drum and withdraw a thrust bearing. Notice the bearing race which goes against the pump is wider than the race which rests against the coast clutch and sun gear assembly below it. Take it to the other bench. Again, this wire race side of the bearing should always go against this flat surface of the pump. Set it onto the parts bench in this area with the wider side downward. I will point out how to correctly install this bearing later during reassembly. The coast clutch drum and sun gear assembly is removed next. Note that if you are working on a 1989 through early 1998 E40D model, the drum will be a steel type casting which will look considerably different than this later type stamp steel version used in the 4R100. Use both hands to lift it out. Turn it over and set it down in this area over the thrust bearing. This very thick end plate along with two friction plates and two thin steel plates below it make up a multiple disc clutch assembly called the overdrive clutch pack. Use a medium sized screwdriver to remove a large snap ring which retains it.
set it down around the coast clutch housing. Lift out the thick end plate and the thinner friction and steel plates. Note that our 4100 demo model has 32 tooth overdrive friction plates. If you are working on an earlier 1989 through early 1998 E40D model, the friction plates will have 64 smaller teeth. Place these parts over the coast clutch drum in the same order as removed. The side of the thick end plate with a circular divot goes down against the snap ring. This plate, which has a paper-like material bonded to it on both sides, is known as a friction plate. It goes down against the end plate next. This thin plain steel plate goes against it. Set the other friction plate down. Set the last steel plate onto it. Use both hands to reach in and lift out the overdrive planetary carrier and ring gear assembly. There's a thrust bearing between this hub and the center support. If it remained in the transmission against the center support, as this one did, pick it up and place it onto the hub. The smaller diameter race goes against the hub. This inner race lip should face downwards towards the center support. Set this assembly, like so, onto the coast clutch assembly. The next structure to remove from the case is the large diameter aluminum overdrive and intermediate piston housing. There is a circular, multi-fingered Belleville-type return spring between this housing and the center support below it which exerts considerable pressure against it. We'll need to use the homemade tool to force the housing downward in order to relieve tension against this snap ring and also allow it to be removed. Before we move forward, note how this snap ring, which fastens the overdrive piston return spring to the housing, is installed into a groove here. It is notorious for spreading and coming out of the groove by itself. In my experience, I see this problem on 75% of the transmissions I work on. We'll discuss a permanent fix for this later, but for now, leave the snap ring as is, regardless of whether or not it is still in its groove. First, remove a hollow bolt located here in the valve body channel casting. Use a 13 millimeter or half inch socket, extension, and ratchet to loosen and back it out. This bolt not only seals the housing against the case, but also functions as the hydraulic feed passage for the overdrive piston. Place it here with the other small parts. Lower the homemade tool into the case. Position the lower section of one inch tubing so that it evenly straddles the opening in the housing. Get two of the long pump to case bolts from the parts bench. 
install them through the top tubing section and into these two pump bolt holes about 10 turns. Use a half inch wrench to keep the nut below the top section from turning. Compress the housing down just enough to relieve the pressure on this large diameter snap ring. Use a large screwdriver to work the snap ring out. Set it onto the bench in this area. Again, hold the nut with a wrench and turn the threaded rod in the counterclockwise direction in order to allow the housing to move upward, relieving the spring pressure. Remove the tool. Replace the two pump bolts into the box. Use both hands to lift the overdrive and intermediate piston housing from the case. Even if the snap ring and return spring from the overdrive piston have come loose, Turn the entire assembly over and set it like so onto the large snap ring. Remove the intermediate piston return spring. Turn it over and set it onto the housing assembly as removed. This structure is known as the center support. It is fastened into place by two hollow bolts in the channel casting area. Use a 13 millimeter or half inch socket extension and ratchet to remove them. Place them into the box with the other hollow bolt. Wear gloves and use both hands to grasp the center part of the support and pull upward very sharply. There should be a wide plastic thrust washer in this area. 
if it remain in the transmission, pick it up off of this part called the intermediate sprag and place it onto the center support as you see here. Take this assembly to the parts bench. Turn it over and set it here onto the piston housing as removed. We've removed about half of the transmission drivetrain at this point, which makes it a great place to pause and take a break. Meet me in lesson five later and we'll finish the transmission disassembly.